Coming up on Dine and Dish Nation, swanky, sophisticated, and perfect for a date night in the D. Prime and proper does not disappoint. And Andiamo, true Italian favorites steeped in rich family tradition. It's clear to see One-Eyed Betty's is an easy favorite in Ferndale for burgers and beer. I'm Cam Carmen. Welcome to Dine and Dish Nation, where we explore the fabulous eateries of Detroit and beyond, where we celebrate the culinary genius that's feeding America's comeback city. Thanks for joining us as we welcome reviewers from our community who've come together to dish about their favorite local restaurants. Dine and Dish Nation works like this. Every week we ask three guests, people who are just like you, to check out three local dining establishments. We're not food snobs here, just real people talking about real food and offering real reviews. We're here at Wright & Company where nothing says Detroit quite like this place. High above Woodward Avenue, its eclectic yet historic atmosphere lends even more evidence to the claim that we are a city of renaissance. They are historic meets hip and we're so proud to call Wright & Company our home base for Dine & Dish Nation. Okay, let's get started. This week, we welcome high school teacher Chris Geyer, massage therapist and small business owner Nikki Calmy, and Naila Ellis-Brown, who is the founder and CEO of Ellis Island Tea. To kick off today's show, first up, Prime & Proper in Detroit. It's a swanky new addition to the downtown scene that's become a standout for steak. My name is Jeremy Sassoon and I am the Chief Experience Officer here at Prime & Proper. At Prime & Proper everything has to be proper, uh, so managing uh, prime beef in a very proper way was really kind of the vision on why we've taken beef so serious here and so it started back to where is our product coming from and then wanting to control for I think the, re the reasons of really us knowing how our product is served to our guests. So downstairs we have uh, I think the Midwest's largest uh, kind of non-wholesaling dry aging facility and it's intended to give us the opportunity to have flexibility and creativity and consistency in serving the best beef uh, hopefully in the world. Favorite fish for me is the Dover Sole. I think it's definitely one of our most enjoyable experiences. It's presented table side uh, and it's broken down right, you know, right next to you so you kind of get a little more, little more attention with your dining opportunity. Our goal is to find out why you're here. I think that intrinsically is the, probably the biggest differentiator. Um, you can find great cuts of meat everywhere. You can find uh, good to great service in many places. But I think all of those small details of what makes your true decision to dine at a place is our passion to find out. So lots of different culinary pushes and seasonal pushes and local pushes to kind of bring and, and celebrate great steaks, but more or less celebrate great hospitality and uh, the time you get to spend with others and we, we don't take that for granted. Really, the name of the game is, at Prime & Proper, dry age, dry age, dry age, make everything perfect. Right, and you'll see that if you take the tour. Um, from where we're sitting, where the stairs go up, behind that there's stairs that go down. You come around the corner and then you see this glass and all the different types of meats, the lamb, the duck, the steak. They have people who cure steaks, who make steaks for a living, and this guy's like third generation. Wow. I mean, you know, you don't get these kind of people just anywhere. No, not every day. So he knows what he's doing. Yeah, and so it's, you know, really an education, and you see the quality that they have in the meats down there. Mm -hmm. There are so many dishes to try at Prime and & Proper, and there's so much to choose from. What did you guys have at Prime & Proper? I got the Wagyu, like, and the Dover Sole. Figured if I was there, you had to go. 
what was it like? Amazing. So you think, am I being ridiculous ordering a $160 steak? Is there any difference? And then you take a bite and two of the waiters like laugh because we were like, oh my god, this is amazing. You melted in your own yes. chair. Yes, <laughs> so good. Mm -hmm. What did you have? I tried the Kansas City strip. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I really wanted to try one of the dry aged and it said that all of the steaks on this list were dry aged for a minimum of 18 days. Mm -hmm. And yep. it was uh, amazing. I had it with hash browns and um, it was an egg on top of it. Sunny side. Really? Yeah. Steak with hash browns and egg. Yeah. Hmm. How was it cooked? I had mine cooked medium. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. And it melted in my mouth like butter. And it was salted to perfection. So this is the first time I've been to a steakhouse where the steak was already cut when it came out. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought that was nice. Yeah. Yeah, but the presentation was great. And Chris, what did you have at Pine and Pepper? Well, um, it's a steakhouse, so I figured I'm going to go steak. So my wife got the filet, and I got the New York strip, mm -hmm. and then we got asparagus. I'm not a huge fan, but my wife loves it, and she wouldn't stop talking about the asparagus. And I mean. The knives cut through it like it was butter. The taste was fantastic, as was mentioned, the salting process. Because we went down and we toured and we saw these big blocks of salt that they used to cure everything. Right. And I was so impressed, I figured I got to get steak. And it was a fantastic choice. So they have a huge menu of uh, not only chops and, 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 and really select cuts of meat, but a lot of uh, raw, raw food, oysters, mm -hmm. things like that, that you know really could please anybody. Yeah. I got the dozen East Coast oysters. They have four different options, but East Coast are my favorite. Nothing, nothing too special, nothing unusual. It was just fresh and delicious and classic. Like right off the boat, right? Yeah. Coming right from the East Coast, yeah. right? Um, let's talk about dessert. Did anybody have dessert? Yes. Well, pavé is um, it's Portuguese, Spanish for pie. And I know a little Portuguese, so I was excited I knew it. And I'm like, oh, we're going to get pavé. The fork sank through it and you pulled it up, and then when you put it in your mouth, it just kind of the taste like spread oh, everywhere. Yum. It's like it coated all your taste buds. It was such a good choice. I would yeah. go back just for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, the steak did the same thing. Everything really did that. It, when it hits your taste buds, it just spread. Even the, we got the Caesar salad. Mm -hmm. The Caesar salad comes in it's like eight large leaves of lettuce. Wow. Okay. And then they have the seasoning and stuff on top and then you cut it yourself. So instead of being all chopped up, it's like more in its natural form. But it was it's it's the normal amount of lettuce. It's just prepared differently. So visually it was really everything visually when it came to the table I thought was wonderful. Did you guys notice that too? Yeah, yeah, the presentation was great. It is funny because they do say you know it's kind of a swanky place, it's a really elegant place. It's kind of retro too, the, the atmosphere. And um, it just seems to work. Um, it just, you know, service for you ladies, good? Yeah, I thought the service was amazing. We just sat down and asked the waiter, what should we get? And he was extremely knowledgeable on everything. Any question we asked, he and he did all the thinking for us, basically. He was great. That's easy. That's that that works for me. Yeah. And if you had something that you love, that you can actually buy the steaks from the butcher counter. How it had the open air kitchen. When you walk past, you see that the butcher counter goes all the way around, and it's all the different cuts of steak and that they've cut up, brought up, and cut up, and you can actually take it home and buy them there and make it at home yourself. And then it goes around to the raw bar and you can sit at the raw bar. Yeah, the atmosphere, if I can, it's the historical, it's right in the old, where the Capitol building used to be. Mm -hmm. I, everyone who works there is like a tour guide. And we sat, I don't know where you guys sat, but we were right in front of these steps that kind of go up into nothing. Mm -hmm. And they explained that those were from the original grocery store that used to be there. Oh, okay. And they're from 1914 and they're marble. And you can see them go up and you see them turn. And they had these series of candles, so the ambiance was fantastic. But just really elegant and fun, you know, because right. you're looking out the window right. and you can see, well, Detroit in all its glory. On to this week's second venue, Andiamo, Detroit. It's sophisticated yet urban chic, and it has incredible views of the city. Andiamo is often called Detroit's Italian, and its family roots run deep. My name is Michael Nowinski. I am the operating partner of Andiamo Detroit Riverfront. The experience you get here is so romantic, it's beautiful. We're on an international waterway overlooking Canada on the Detroit River. The patio is beautiful, the dining room is beautiful. It's a tremendous place to come and dine. The history of Andiamo, we've been here at this location for 15 years, but Andiamo 
is becoming almost 30 years of age and still flourishing. Original Chef Aldo, God bless his soul, he passed away about seven years ago. Uh, he was right from Italy, so all our dishes and recipes, we have not changed whatsoever. And as far as our pastas, they're all homemade. From the flour, the dough, everything. It's, it's just amazing, the process, to see the nice Italian ladies making like every breadstick you have. And we go through thousands and thousands a week, are each individually homemade. It's so fun working here. Uh, we get guests from all over the world. You know, conventions and all the people coming now from the suburbs, Detroit is blossoming. We just uh, bought our own shuttle for us and Joe Mears. So now when you're going to a concert or a sporting event or other events, we have our own shuttle. So you can come here, we give you a free shuttle ride, no cost. It's for all ages here, you can come. Children, families are welcome, it can be date night. We have tons of engagements. We have engagements here every weekend. So it's very romantic also. We have a wonderful bar and a wonderful happy hour from three to six, Monday through Friday. So, so many things to do here. Andiamo is known for its atmosphere, but also its food. It's been around a long, long time. They have lots of locations. You guys went to the Detroit location. Yeah. Right, right Tell on the riverfront, mm -hmm. the Red Sea. Yeah. Tell me about that. What did you have? I got the shrimp salad and it was massive. I wound up bringing it home and having it for lunch the next day because it was so big. But it had um, huge chunks of artichokes and um, little rolls. It just was beautiful the way that they displayed it. But little rolls of prosciutto and the Santa shrimp was cooked perfect and they were huge. How about you? I had a salad as well. I had a Caesar salad and it was a Caesar salad. Mm -hmm. um, as far as my entree, it was really good and I felt special because I was actually offered something that was not on the menu. Oh. So I just looked up to the server and I told her I like white wine with um, lemon. Can you give me, is there any option? And she's like, well, at Aniamos we're all about the guests and whatever you want we'll make. And so the chef actually made a sauce um, that was not on the menu. So it made me feel special. and it. It could have played a role in how good I thought the dish was, mm -hmm. um, but it was Maybe. amazing. One of the best pastas I've ever had. Wow. And I got it with shrimp and um, scallops, down to the amount of shrimp and amount of scallops. They gave me the option. It was really good, and the shrimp was huge. She told me they were large. I wasn't expecting them to be that big. They were huge, mm -hmm. and the scallops were huge as well. They're, the scallops were like um, a dollar. Like a yeah, ball. yeah. Like really huge. that big? Like yeah. a golf ball? Yeah, they were huge. How about you, Chris? What'd you have? Well, again, my wife and I, it's nice. We always split stuff. So she got the salmon, and I got, it's called pedo di pollo. And it's a lightly breaded chicken breast with prosciutto and a white wine sauce. And it was just fantastic. The prosciutto cheese makes the whole chicken dish that much better. And again, there was so much, I had it the next day. Um, I, we finished the fish because <laughs> my wife really likes fish. So we, we got through that pretty quickly. What we did is, um, like you mentioned, everyone there was so nice. Um, Richard was the manager, mm -hmm. and you know I explained why we were there, and he's like, we treat everyone the same, you're gonna get the same great service that everyone gets. And we were down over by the water. Yeah, it was really, like I said, the ambiance was nice. You're right there on, as we were sitting at our table, we're looking outside and there were people taking wedding photos. Oh, awesome. It was just so much fun, we stayed right on the riverfront. And it all started, though, with great service and a great meal family-owned business, many, many years it's been around, and, and original recipes too, so you really can't, I mean, you can't really beat that. And dessert. Yeah, well they said the, um, the dessert that we had was a tuxedo. It, was, it looked like a little uh, um, hat, you mm -hmm. know, like a top hat. And they said it's an original recipe. Dessert. Uh, I had tiramisu. Mm -hmm. I had to get tiramisu. <laughs> Uh, wow. Tiramisu is ladyfingers soaked in espresso and then layered with marzipan cheese and dusted with um, cocoa on top. I did the espresso also. I love that Andiamo's, other places do this too, but I don't know why I think of Andiamo's when I go to it. They have like the um, brock candy stirs when you get the espresso. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just think it's cute. Yeah, my wife, my wife got the um, espresso too. She's Brazilian, she loves coffee. She says most Brazilians don't have blood, they have coffee running through their <laughs> veins. So the espresso was important and she loved that too because it allowed her to flavor it exactly the way she wanted to 
It, it's a nice little touch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's funny because sometimes with a restaurant like Andiamo that's been around forever, you kind of overlook it sometimes because yeah. there are so many new and exciting things to see. But it really is traditional and you kind of forget how good it is. Yeah. If you're doing a business client, that's a great place. I think it shows off Detroit. Mm -hmm. It is a historic Detroit kind of restaurant. So, you know, if you're bringing someone in for business, that's a great place to take it to show off the city. Mm -hmm. And now to our final eatery, One-Eyed Betty's. It's an awesome watering hole in Ferndale that caters to some very picky customers. It's a place where they are serious about food and beer, especially beer. I am Michael Fredberg. I am the general manager here at One-Eyed Betty's. The dining experience here is uh, all based around beer and the food itself Call it maybe uh, New Orleans, a little bit influenced. The food on the menu, I think, is uh, really quite an eclectic group. Uh, you know, we have everything from fish and chips. We have a fantastic burger. The beer lineup, uh, we have 44 tap handles. I think it's five or six right now that stay on tap all the time. Uh, a couple of those are, are from out of the state, outside the states, and the rest of them are from Michigan. One of them's the the best beer ever made. And uh, outside of that, you know, we just kind of re rotate seasonally and, you know, try to stay relevant, try to stay uh, with the pack, if you will. One of the owners, when she was working on the other side of the state, the pinball machines were a, uh, a big thing. Um, she kind of brought that culture back here. We have five pinball machines at any one time and then they get changed out periodically. What should that person expect when they walk in the door? A good time. They should expect excellent service, and by that I mean, like, if you don't know what you're doing as far as beer is concerned, the service can help you through it. You know, they can guide your journey. And then, we keep coming back to it, but the food is good. You can sit here for a half an hour and get in and out, or you can sit here for four hours and have a good time hooting and hollering with your friends. One Eye Betty's is a very popular place, and I, I get it. I get it. They have such cool things. Their beer list is is phenomenal. There, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just, it's a mile long, and their steaks are great and their dishes are great. What did what did you have, Chris? Um, well, we started out. I guess start from the beginning. We each got um, beer. My wife got like a lighter beer because that's what she likes, and I got like a it was a strawberry flavored um, home brew. Oh, it was fantastic. I mean, I don't usually like heavier beers, but this was good it, with the fruit infusion, it kind of just explodes in your mouth. I mean, really, it sounds weird, but when you first get it in there, it really does kind of attack your taste buds. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's an aggressive beer, but <laughs> it was really good. And so we started with that, and then we got this, it's called an apple orchard salad, which they actually slice an apple, and then they um, bake it a little bit, and put it on top of the salad, which has uh, I believe it's uh, blue cheese and walnuts that are glazed in the salad. It was just a great way to start. And then uh, after that, we went into the main dishes, which I got Halyard of the Community, which is one of their specialties. And my wife got the um, cowboy steak. It's huge, and it's a $35 steak, but if you went to another restaurant, it'd be 70 It said it's the one item on the menu that they're not trying to make a profit on. They just want to really provide something excellent for people who want to come in. And it's really, really well made. And the butter on the top of it, and they have, there's fat on the outside, but it cooks in. It's just really, it's delicious, this. I mean, it, you would think it would cost a lot more than it does, but it's huge. We took some of it home. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, tell me about this palliard of the community. It's like a Parmesan crusted chicken with pasta. And one of you got that, right? I got it. What did you think of that? You read it and you're like, it's chicken Parmesan, but it's not. So it comes out and the chicken's really big and crispy and the pasta's on top like when you got it at Andiamo. And the sauce was, you would love the sauce. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So it was uh, like lemon, white wine, garlic. And so you think, well the pasta's on top of the chicken, it's going to make it too moist. And it didn't because it, I don't know how it possibly had so much flavor when it didn't feel like it was doused in okay. the yeah. sauce. It was so good. Naila, what did you have? I had a Scottish salmon. Mm -hmm. It was pretty good. I um, so the 
manager also came out and made recommendations for us, and he told us to start with the fried okra. It was the best okra I've ever had in my life. Wow. It was extremely good. It was dipped in beer batter, and beer batter is usually too thick for me. Mm -hmm. This was thin. It was a perfect beer batter. We devoured that. Um, and then for my entree, I had the Scottish salmon, and it was over a bed of uh, coconut rice. And then it was um, a cilantro sauce covering the salmon. It wasn't overpowering. It was perfect. My dish was perfect. Tell me about the donuts. <laughs> uh, our, actually, so we had a waiter and we had somebody who was in training. So the trainee came by just to collect our dishes and he's like, are you getting dessert? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. He's like, you have to get the donuts. So there was um, cinnamon sugar, which tasted like an apple orchard, um, powdered sugar, which came with a raspberry jam, and that one was my favorite. It was amazing. And then um, peanut butter sriracha, which I didn't try, oh, wow. but it's oh, interesting. Okay. And then uh, maple bacon. And, and, all and they had bacon on top of it, yeah. Okay. Donut. And the maple bacon yeah. donut. Okay. The glaze was amazing. We got a dessert too. We got an apple brown betty. It's got like a cake bottom to it. It's kind of like it's a it's like a mix between a pie crust and a cake. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the baked apples which are spiced with cinnamon and then I don't know what the ice cream was. It was almost like it had walnuts it was or a something. Salted caramel. Salted bread caramel. Something. Yes, salted caramel. It was just fantastic. One eyed Betty's is kind of a quirky cool. Yeah place, not stuffy, not overpriced, not overdressed, you can kind of just go as you are. I like it especially in the winter because it's like big portions, comfort food, mm -hmm. like yeah, it's That's what they said, it's all comfort yeah. food. A big thank you now to this week's guests, Chris, Nikki, Naila, thank you all for being here, I appreciate it. And also to Prime and Proper, Andiamo Detroit, and One-Eyed Betty's. So join us next time for more real people, real food, and real reviews right here on Dine and Dish Nation. I'm Cam Carmen. Thanks for being with us. Like Detroit as a whole, there's a lot of great history in, in, in what we do. Of course. <laughs> Mazel tov. And now it's time for our final eatery. One-Eyed Betty's is an awesome watering hole in Ferndale that caters <laughs> 400 re re <laughs> Take two. Per word. No pressure at all. Okay.